Hello everyone, this is Legitimus. Today I'm going to be doing my impression of a YouTuber. <laughs> Alright, here we are on this parkour map. Let's, uh, let's go for the jump. Let's see, alright. I can, whew, I can do this. Oh man, press space a little bit late there. Let's see if I can get back up. No. No, this normal three block one up jump can't possibly be possible. I don't think so. Hmm, I've been here for 45 minutes and, oh! Are you are stuck slash trigger kill? <gasps> Amazing! I'm not even opt, and it has taken me back. Now I can complete the map. Your win! All right, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to smash like and subscribe. But Mr. Legitimus, how'd you get that to work? The trigger command doesn't do anything when I use it. Well, settle down there. Let me explain. The slash trigger command in Minecraft is the closest thing that we have to custom commands in vanilla. Essentially, it allows a player who is not opt and doesn't have command permissions to change a scoreboard value. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a very simple example of how to set up a kill trigger so that you can use essentially slash kill without the ability to kill other people or being opt. I could see this being used in various survival servers, mini games, whatever. All right, the first command we're going to want to do is scoreboard objectives add, and then we're going to add an objective called kill. This is what we're going to be typing in when we want to kill ourselves. <laughs> YouTube's going to demonetize me if I say that. This is what we type in when we want to die. <laughs> There's no good way to phrase that. <laughs> Scoreboard objectives add kill, and we're gonna set it to the type trigger. Then you can just hit enter, and you're ready to go. I'm also gonna set this to be visible on the sidebar, just for testing purposes. So scoreboard, objectives, set display, sidebar, kill. Okay, set slot sidebar to show objective kill, and nothing has shown up because nobody has any scores. So let's try it out. This is probably what 90% of people do. They go slash trigger. It's not there. That's fine. I'll type it in kill, and I'll set it to a, a billion. You cannot trigger this objective yet. Why not? I want to. It's because you haven't enabled it. This allows full control over when people can run this trigger command. If you wanted to have a trigger that only works in mini games or only works in the lobby of your server or something, you have total absolute control. So the command you use to enable it is scoreboard players enable. Now this goes player by player. So we can choose to enable only players who are on a certain team. We can choose to only enable the nearest player, random player, any selector or a specific username. I'm just going to enable it for at a. So enable at a kill. Okay. You can see that it has set our score to zero. That's kind of nice, I suppose. Now let's type slash trigger kill. Okay, and that automatically increases our score by one every time we type it with nothing afterwards. So kill, oh, looks like we can't do it a second time. We have to enable it again. Now we do trigger kill, it adds one more. Enable it, one more. Okay, but now's about the time when you're gonna wanna get your data pack folder open. Whoa, 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 whoa. Data pack folder? Sorry, I only know how to use command blocks. So here's a disclaimer at the beginning of this. Really, this whole thing should be done in a data pack, which my data pack tutorial, link in the top right corner, big picture on the screen, there it is. If you want to do this properly, go watch that video after this one, but you could also do it in command blocks. They do the same thing, but data packs do it better and safer. I'll explain the problem when we come to it. Let's go through it for now. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is slap down an always active repeating command block. In this command block, we're going to type scoreboard players enable at a kill. This will just enable the trigger every tick. This is as often as you can possibly do that. It'll just always be on. Cool beans. Now we can type the slash trigger kill command as often as we want and it will go up. You can also add or set to your own score. So if I do trigger kill set a billion, that will work. So I wouldn't recommend using this for any kind of currency system or anything where the score really matters. It can also go into the negative if you add a negative number. Here we are with negative 50,000 kill. <laughs> nice. The slash trigger command is really best used for things that are just activated once and it doesn't matter what your score is. Okay, now we've got it enabled. What do we do next? This is where things start to get really sketchy because we're going to be running the kill command every tick. And so if we mess this command up, we will be dying every tick forever, unstoppably. This is why you should use a data pack, because a data pack is saved in a text file outside of Minecraft. 
which means if you horrifically screw something up, you can just go in and change it. In Minecraft, you're gonna have to like, get MC edit, get a friend on your LAN world, open it in a server and have command blocks disabled. There, There's ways to save yourself, but it's a little iffy. So please, this is only for demonstration purposes. Just put this all in your tick.mc function file in a data pack. Now, what is the next command we are going to be running? Have this in an always active chain command. Kill at A. No, kill at A scores equals, and then an open curly bracket, kill equals one dot dot. Close curly bracket, close regular bracket. Now, carefully, slowly move your mouse towards the done button. In fact, let's double check this. So scores, it's all blue, all looks very nice. Uh, when their scores of kill are equal to one or higher, that's what the two dots mean, and we are going to kill them. Okay, good. We lived, because our kill score is currently set to negative 49,997. But at this stage, if we were to set our kill score to one, we would be in an infinite death loop. That's why this next command is the most important one. Scoreboard players reset at a kill. Boom, we're gone from the sidebar. Getting our score enabled, and we're checking if we have it set to one, and then we're resetting it in that order because it's a chain command block. That's why I didn't do this with three repeating command blocks. Let's test our work. Trigger, oh. It doesn't work. Well, shucks. That's because it will never be enabled for us. This happens, then this happens, then this happens, then we get to interact with it, and so at this point, it has been reset. Because fun fact, resetting a player's trigger is the same as disabling it. This is actually how you disable a score. Let's do this then. We'll add this same at a score is equal kill one dot dot over here. So if your score is one or higher, it'll reset you back to zero. That looks better. So trigger, kill. Hey, we died and we respawned safely. Thanks for watching. Here's what you should watch next. My Telra tutorial has a really nice tie-in with the trigger command because you can make it so that when you click on a message in chat, it will run a trigger command and cause something to happen. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, check out my data packs tutorial where I simply and efficiently run you through how to set up a basic data pack. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.